first in high definition from the station on your side. This is Wavy News 10. We begin with breaking news. In the race for the White House, Republican candidate Rick Santorum is suspending his campaign. He made that announcement a short time ago at an event in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. He spent the weekend in Virginia after his three-year-old daughter was hospitalized. The move makes Mitt Romney the most likely Republican nominee. We're going to have more on what this means for the presidential race tonight at 5.30. We also have some breaking news in Virginia Beach right now where police are investigating the death of a two-year-old boy. Police say the boy's mother left the child with her boyfriend, 23-year-old Jarrell Edwards. They say the boy died in Edwards' care. This happened last Thursday night, April 5th, at a home on Jocelyn Court. Police are awaiting an autopsy to determine just how the two-year-old boy died. Edwards does face a felony child neglect charge. Well, Navy jets are once again flying above Virginia Beach and the Mayfair Muse Apartments. An investigation into Friday's jet crash there is still underway. Here's a new look now at the crash site four days after the plane landed. And you can see there's still a good bit of debris and foam that was used to put those flames out. And 10 on your side's Art Kahn is live at the crash site now. What's the mood today among residents, Art? Well, clearly, Tom, the fact that everyone got out of this alive hasn't been lost on anyone. However, there is some frustration among residents about not being able to get back onto the property. Certainly, that's understandable. But what might surprise you is how residents I spoke with today feel about the Navy and the jets that are once again screaming through the skies just overhead. In the skies above Mayfair Muse Apartments, it is business as usual, but there is still a lot of work to do on the ground, which means it'll be some time before residents are allowed to return and salvage any belongings, even from the buildings that did not appear to be badly damaged on Friday. There's a lot more involved than I think a lot of tenants uh, realize. We have a uh, uh, engineer coming out to assess the buildings and make sure that it is safe before we get back in. I asked residents like Tracy Shaw if she or her neighbors can ever feel safe here again. A little nervous, a little nervous, but we're going to probably stay down here because it's another one in a million shot that our house will get hit by a jet again. I was home. I was upstairs. Tracy's son, Colby, witnessed what has become known as the miracle on 24th Street. Like his mother, he is doubtful about the odds of a second crash in the same spot. He harbors no resentment to the Navy or the pilots that crashed here and wants his neighbors in the sky to keep flying. They're flying for a good cause. They're flying to protect us. I'm a little anxious about it, but, you know, I really feel like that's the sound of freedom, these jets. Brenda Knapp owns this accounting business located next to the apartments off 24th Street. This accident isn't going to make me want to move my business away. In fact, people are focused more on moving back in than moving out. Yeah, and you know, let's face it, it's going to be some time before residents are allowed back in and rebuilding can begin if, in fact, the owner of the property chooses to rebuild. Now, you know, since this whole thing started on Friday, there's been questions about whether there was any environmental impact from the crash. I'll have more for you on that. Also, some coverage of Congressman Scott Ridgell's visit to the scene today. Reporting live from Virginia Beach, Art Kahn, 10 on your side. You get that feeling of trepidation balanced with the desire to return to normalcy. Thank you, Art. Khan reporting from Virginia Beach. Reaction to the crash. Hear what Navy officials told 10 on your side about the outlying landing field debate in light of this crash in Virginia Beach. That story is new at 530. A pregnant woman was released from the hospital today after a man stabbed her and stole money that she carried last night in Norfolk. Police arrested this man, 48-year-old Louis Belcher, for that crime. They took him into custody last night shortly after the robbery and stabbing. Ten on your side's Katie Collette joins us now with more on what the victim's friends have to say about this crime. Katie. Alveda, they tell me they're shocked, they're upset, they're frustrated, and they are angry. This 7-Eleven on Shore Drive in Norfolk, a pretty popular place in the community. Everybody knows everyone at this local store. Everyone comes here. I come here on my break. He comes here on his. Everybody know each other. You know, everybody talk to each other when they come in. And what happened here last night around 5.30 has everyone talking. At first we heard that someone had got killed and then we made a few phone calls and some friends told us that it was actually Andrea who had got 
stabbed by someone trying to rob the store. Police say this man, Louis Belcher of West Ocean View, walked up to the victim, who we learned is the store manager. They say he pulled out a knife, stabbed her, and stole the deposit bag of money she carried from the store. What really has everyone upset? She should be due sometime soon, actually. She's been pregnant for a while, and it's clear it was very visible to see that it was a pregnant woman that he attacked. Miracle Davis and her friend Charles shop at the 7-Eleven regularly. The store manager, someone they look forward to seeing. Nice lady. Talk to her every time I come to the store. She's always so nice when you come into the store. She's just the sweetest person ever, and we're just sorry that this happened to her. Mm -hmm. News that the victim is going to be fine, something they are happy to hear. Miracle thrilled the police already have someone in custody for the crime. And I think that he should be arrested and mm -hmm. thrown away forever. <laughs> Now, police charged Belcher with robbery and felony assault. He's in the Norfolk jail with no bond. In the newsroom, Katie Collette, 10 on your side. All right, thanks a lot, Katie. Pretty windy outside today. You can see by old glory flapping in the breeze, but the sun was out, and that always helps. Much different story tomorrow, though. 10 on your side, Chief Meteorologist Don Slater is here to explain why, Don. Well, now, the good thing about it is we're going to see the winds drop on down a little bit later on tonight, but it's, it's a partly cloudy out there right now. We've seen lots of sunshine throughout the day. A few stray clouds, and that's about it, but the wind has really, really been up. We expected it to be rather breezy, but I think it crossed the line and out and out windy for most of the day. Uh, we did see wind gusts last hour that were pretty universally around 30 miles an hour. Uh, right now, the only one we've got about 30 miles an hour as far as wind gusts is Elizabeth City, but still, it's around 20, 20. 25, 28 miles an hour in terms of the peak gusts. Those should drop off a little bit later on. Temperatures today, while well, they topped off at around 75, right now they're 72 to 75 degrees into the region. What are we going to do overnight? Well, by 9 o'clock, we're starting to cool down a little bit already. You'll note that they, in the yellow color, uh, the warmer air is starting to punch farther southward. There's where we are tomorrow morning. There's where we are tomorrow afternoon. Only around 56, 57 degrees. So those winds should drop off sharp after dark as the winds drop the temperatures are going to fall too and cooler more humid air we've talked to for days now about a fire danger uh, and again that should ease off as well we'll have more on that in just a few minutes the Gloucester County Sheriff's Office wants to warn residents about a rash of recent burglaries. Deputies say that someone has broken into at least 12 homes over the past two weeks. So far, they've stolen more than $20,000 in jewelry, electronics, weapons, and cash. Most of the burglaries happened overnight. If you see anything that looks suspicious, give the crime line a call. You can expect the HRBT to be a busy place this weekend. VDOT's planning another closure for the Monitor Merrimack Bridge Tunnel, so this time it'll be the southbound lanes. And what does that mean? Well, all lanes heading towards Suffolk will be closed starting at 8 p.m. on Friday. That'll stay that way until 6 Monday morning. Drivers can use the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel or the James River Bridge as a detour. I'm sure a lot of folks will do that. Also, both lanes of the Gilmerton Bridge in Chesapeake will be closed. Crews are working on that bridge replacement project here. The span will shut down Friday at 8 p.m. through Monday at 5 a.m. A big welcome home for sailors aboard the USS Helena. Ten on your side was Pierre's side for the first hug, but the recipient didn't seem too happy about it. I remember that sound. That was nice of his wife, too, to give up the first hug so he could hold his baby son. The fast attack submarine pulled into Naval Station Norfolk this morning. Dozens of family members were there to greet their loved ones. Oh, it's very nice. It's been a couple months. <laughs> and as you can tell, I have a very rambunctious family. It is so nice. Uh, the uh, baby's been saying da 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 as soon as she saw the boat, so it's nice just to finally be complete again. So happy to see Daddy home. The sailors were gone for around three months for operations in the Caribbean and Latin America. Well, zero tolerance, that's the Navy's policy on sexual assault. Tonight, how officials are reinforcing that message. Then, on a day when many thought a grand jury would be listening to evidence in the Trayvon Martin case, violence begins to rise. Tonight, we have the latest from Sanford, Florida, as many wait to find out if George Zimmerman will be charged. So many are still waiting for a decision in the Trayvon Martin case more than a month after the teenager was killed. NBC's Jay Gray is in Florida, where frustration is boiling over. 
the waiting game continues in Sanford, Florida. We thought they had enough from day one for the police to make the arrest, but in the 43 days it has been now and counting, we think the evidence has unfolded to give a plethora of evidence to at least arrest George Zimmerman. We now know if there is an arrest in the death of Trayvon Martin, special prosecutor Angela Corey will make that call on her own. By not going to the grand jury, she's decided this is a decision she can make, and it's going to be a decision she can justify without needing any cover. As Corey decides his fate for the first time since he shot and killed the unarmed teenager, George Zimmerman is now reaching out. Lawyers confirm this is his new website, which includes this message to supporters. As a result of the incident and the subsequent media coverage, I've been forced to leave my home, my school, my employer, my family, and ultimately my entire life. Martin's mother wants everyone to know she's lost so much more. Um, this is not just life changing for us, life ended for Trayvon Martin. So this has affected us very uh, deeply. I have my good days and my bad days. I have my moments where I'm smiling, thinking about Trayvon's smile. And I have my moments where I'm still crying. A family grieving in a community clearly on edge. Yesterday, protesters closed down the Sanford Police Department for several hours. Overnight, shots were fired at an unmanned police car parked outside the gated community where Martin was killed. A graphic reminder of the raw emotions here, more than a month after the shooting. Jay Gray, NBC News, Sanford, Florida. And we just learned that Zimmerman has reached out to the special prosecutor. No word yet on what he said. Now, a Michigan teacher claims she was fired for her opinion on Trayvon Martin. You're going to hear her story new tonight at 5.30. Tulsa investigators say the two men accused in a deadly shooting rampage have now confessed. Police say 32-year-old Alvin Watts confessed to shooting two people and 19-year-old Jake England confessed to shooting three others on Friday. All the victims were African-American. Based on Facebook postings, police say that one of the men may have wanted to avenge the death of his father two years ago. A house erupts into flames, taking out nearby buildings this is in southeastern Michigan. Why officials say a fire this big is no accident. Then a fire at this Norfolk building last night in black smoke across several cities. Tonight we'll get a first look at the damage. Well, right now, Norfolk City Manager is giving an update on the future of Waterside. The city narrowed the field down to two options. You're looking at them now. One would bring more entertainment, the other a new conference center. Cornish Companies wants to create Waterside Live, a venue featuring entertainment and restaurants. It would cost about $30 million. On the other hand, the Harvey Lindsay Development Group out of Norfolk wants to start from scratch and build a conference center on the site. This is a $200 million project and would also feature a new marina and two hotels. City Manager Marcus Jones is set to make his recommendation to City Council later this month. We have a crew inside that meeting now at City Council. We'll let you know what Jones had to say tonight at 6. Well, the Norfolk Fire Marshal is still trying to figure out what caused this dramatic fire on the roof of the Fort Norfolk Medical Building. That fire broke out around 640 last night. And as you can see from our tower cam, it sent thick black smoke over the city of Norfolk. Down on your side, Saber Hurdle reports that investigators have put damage at around a million dollars. These pictures from Norfolk Fire Rescue show fire damage to the roof. Another shows damage to the building's air handling system. As restoration crews assess cleanup inside the building, outside a fire crew wrapped up its hoses at the Fort Norfolk Plaza. This is investigators try to figure out why the fire happened. They're shifting through all of the, the ash on the roof and trying to come up, pinpoint where the fire may have started. And then once they can pinpoint it, then they can start looking for a cause. From Chopper 10, you can see where a 2,000 square foot area of the roof caught fire. The materials consist of insulation and a rubber membrane some four to five inches thick. There were roof roofing contractors that were working on the roof, but they were working with a no flame um, process. So uh, what that entails, the investigators will be going into that. He says due to the fire damaged roof, there's water inside the building. Right now, uh, we know that we have significant water damage on the, the ninth, 8th, and 7th floors. 
and other water damage throughout the building. According to him, an off-duty firefighter is credited with calling in the alarm and getting people evacuated from the building. In Norfolk, Ava Hurdle, 10 on your side. Battalion Chief Worley said that one of the tenants advised him that it would be about 48 hours before they could get back into that building. A massive fire destroyed several homes in eastern Michigan last night. Detroit firefighters spent hours trying to put out those flames. At least three homes were burned to the ground. A family lived inside one home, but the other two were vacant. Investigators say that fire is suspicious. And we had concerns now, last night. Your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Don Slater about those high winds that were blowing through Norfolk and of course that was a concern about the fire at the medical plaza. Yeah, a very interesting situation. Yeah, it was and uh, we brought you all kinds of pictures of it. We had a time lapse sequence and stuff uh, to show you how that fire progressed with the wind. Well, we still have a high fire danger for today. Uh, obviously, this time of year, uh, the grass hasn't really fully come, out, uh, come up, especially those tall grasses out in the woods as well. There's a lot of uh, debris, leaf debris, dead leaves basically. Uh, so so if anything catches fire, it could really, really take off. Uh, so again, that fire danger continues to be real high right now. And there's a red flag warning for all of these areas, uh, virtually, uh, quite literally, all of Virginia and most of North Carolina as well. Uh, and again, that fire danger remains very, very high. Now, a little bit later on tonight, the winds are going to drop on down. We're going to see cooler air uh, and less wind and a little more humidity in the next several days. So again, we've got some big changes coming up. Uh, and of course, the biggest one that was that endangers life and limb is, and property uh, is the fact that we've got such a high fire danger. And we've got some wind in the region right now and some clouds are starting to develop. You'll note this right through here. Uh, it's called a leaf cloud and it's just out of a front uh, that's developing. The front is developing right about into here right now and it's got a low pressure area with it. Uh, but again, the front is right on into here right now and it's kicking through the Richmond area and by 9 o'clock it'll be kicking right on through the Hampton Road cities, if not even uh, by 8 o'clock. And winds flip on over to the northwest, not as strong, 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. Still a west southwesterly wind and fairly strong across eastern North Carolina at 9 o'clock. But then thereafter, that front drops on through, and by 2 o'clock in the morning, we've got mostly cloudy skies at that point, much, much lighter winds uh, by that point as well. And then our skies clear off tomorrow morning, much less wind during the day tomorrow. 10 mile an hour winds, but a lot more cloud cover in the afternoon, and maybe even just a sprinkle or two, but not much more than that is kind of another little impulse drops on through. There's where things are overnight into Thursday morning. We'll see sunshine again uh, to start the day, uh, but then some cloud cover picks up in the afternoon. We'll start to clear off a little bit later on in the day again uh, as well. But the big story is going to be much, much cooler in the next couple of days. Today we hit 75 again. Uh, didn't expect it. We expected around 70, 72. We had 75, 76 yesterday. So it was a degree cooler. Uh, 73, 72, 71 one right now into Virginia Beach. There's our low last night, 49, a little on the chilly side, uh, 75 in Chesapeake and Suffolk right now. But the winds, that's the big story for the day. Again, wind gusts right now, anything popping above 15 miles an hour registers. Uh, so we're getting a lot of them, basically around 25 miles an hour uh, for most of us throughout the region. But again, very, very nice and mild, 70, 75 degrees. Uh, but it's going to start to cool on off from the northwest a little bit later on tonight. And temperatures will drop on down, but the wind is going to drop on down as well. By tomorrow morning, around 43 degrees, uh, and we could see some upper 30s inland during the overnight hours and into the first part of the day tomorrow. Tomorrow during the day, that chance of rain very, very negligible. Uh, again, not a real big chance of rain there at all. 59 Thursday, a little warmer by Friday. More than 700,000 Americans suffer from stroke each year. We'll explain the results of a 20-year study it says having a sibling who suffered a stroke significantly increases your risk. Next. Then beware of bears. A warning from Virginia wildlife officials. New at 530, why they say that black bears are on the move and how you can keep them away from your home. Just a few moments ago, we learned that lawyers for George Zimmerman, the man police say shot Trayvon Martin, have withdrawn from the case. Today, they said they have lost contact with Zimmerman and haven't heard from him since Sunday. They also said he contacted the special prosecutor assigned to the case against their advice. That special prosecutor will decide if Zimmerman will face charges for shooting the 17-year-old. Well, having a sibling who suffered a stroke significantly increases 
increases your risk for stroke. That's according to a 20-year study in Sweden. Researchers there found the risk for stroke increased 60% and found genetics may play a role. They also say if a sibling had a stroke before age 55, the risk of suffering a stroke at a similar young age was double. Fewer teens are having children of their own. The latest data from the National Center for Health Statistics show that teen birth rate is at historic lows. It declined 9% from 2009 to 2010. The rate has dropped 44% since 1990. Researchers say the teen birth rate stayed the same in only three states, West Virginia, North Dakota, and Montana. Still ahead, a new crime-fighting tool created by the FCC aimed to stop thieves from targeting your smartphone. Then a school bus scare. A routine ride took a turn for the worst when the bus driver got sick. Coming up at 5.30, hear from the student who jumped into action and steered the bus to safety. Sexy sisters at six. Uh huh. Um, what you want me to do? Hello. Is it still staticky? No, it's good right now. Okay, I, I pull the um, antenna up. Hi, dear. Check, check, check. Thank one, you. two. Mm -hmm. so. One, two, three, four, five. Check Testing one, two, three, four, five, six. The nation's biggest wireless carriers have joined with law enforcement to create a new tool to fight the sudden surge in smartphone thefts. Today, the FCC announced a new database designed to blacklist stolen phones and tablets to make sure they cannot be sold and used again. But the new program also includes an effort to educate consumers on how to protect their phones. If a phone is stolen, a button can be pressed and can be rendered useless anywhere in the world. Over the next six months, the nation's largest carriers will launch programs that prevent reported devices from being reactivated on its current network. In about 18 months, the plan is also to stop stolen phones from being used on any network. Next at 530, trying to bring an end to a disturbing trend in the Navy.